Hello and welcome to Coach's Corner. I'm Aaron Dacus sitting in with 165 pound national champion Diorian Coleman, Coach Jim Ziegler, and 141 pound national champion Zach Loveless. So Coach, we got the chance to talk a little bit before the show actually started. And the paper said you had a slow start, but you corrected them and said that you had a good Friday and a great Saturday. Would you like to expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah, on Friday, we, we, were, uh, we were very good on Friday. We wrestled well. Um, we had the seven guys get through. Uh, I think the separation on Friday from Friday to Saturday between our score at the end of the day on Friday and the score of Northeastern Oklahoma is that they had 10 guys scoring on Friday. And, uh, you know, we, we picked up a couple of points from those other three that, uh, aside from our seven All-Americans, but not to the magnitude that they did. So uh, we had seven guys that were scoring as well as any of their seven. Uh, but it created a deficit, and on Saturday, our seven guys outperformed their nine guys. So, yeah, good. Now you talked about the seven All Americans. What does that mean to you to have your team succeed like that in a tournament? As as far as oh, uh, well, clearly I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the accomplishments of the team, and I think uh, you know it's not just those seven individuals, but it, it, I think it is. And as I tell our team as we prepare, uh, it represents all the work that all of us do throughout the year and those seven guys uh, uh, happened to come home with the hardware but they certainly couldn't have done it without the other kids on the team. Um, I think in my mind I think it uh, um, reassures me that we're doing things right, that we're doing well, uh, that uh, the patience that we exhibit through the year, uh, that our, our plan and our game philosophy through the year, uh, although it takes us through some ups and downs, that at the end of the year that it pays off well for us. Yeah. Well, Congratulations, by the Thank way. Thank you. Uh, now, Diorian, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your victory as you won in the last seconds, three to one. And would you just care to take us through those last couple seconds there? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, honestly don't, I honestly don't know what I was thinking. I, was, <laughs> I really don't. I, was, I just know what I had to do it at that moment, at that time. And I don't know what made me drop to my knees and shoot a double leg, but it happened. And then... Like, it was going through my mind, like, maybe it's not a two, you know? Like, I was freaking out a little bit, you know, when I was, <laughs> when I was reviewing it, but a part of me just knew it, you know? Like, when I first got there, I just knew everything, and it was an awesome feeling once they said it was two. I, I That's loved so it. so cool. <laughs> I love it. Just yeah. the reaction. That's neat. <laughs> <clears throat> you talked about how they reviewed it, and you asked the mm -hmm. official to review it. Yeah, right? what happened was... Uh, the, it was a tie match, one to one, mm -hmm. and they got into a flurry at the very end of the conclusion of the match. And Diorian uh, uh, ended up on his knees and then double legged the guy. Ended up in a shot where he got both legs and uh, dropped the guy to his rear end, where it's uh, uh, and it's a two point takedown. He had established control, but the question was the clock. And the officials waved it off, said no, no points. You know, the clock had expired. Uh, well, we're given three um, review cards as coaches. Uh -huh. Just like in the NFL where they have the red bag that they throw out on the field. And, and uh, Bernie and I both had our review cards out at the table <laughs> before they could even, you know, uh, stand up from what had happened. and said, nope, we want to see it again. So yeah. we had our review card. It went to the video review. The two officials go over, review it. And in the meantime, the two wrestlers are standing on the mat. The crowd's waiting. Nobody knows if it's two or not two. They're waiting <laughs> for the conclusion of the instant replay. Yeah. And at the conclusion of the instant replay, it showed that he had gotten the two-point takedown right at the last second of the match. They awarded the two points, and he won three to one. So, so cool. Yeah, it was and pretty exciting. Yep. That, it seemed like that confidence carried throughout the, that entire review where it seemed like everybody on the Northwest side knew that you guys, that Diorian had gotten that takedown. So I we felt really confident. Yeah. We were in line. The clock was in a position where we saw the takedown, and I recall looking up at the clock as as the guy hit, I looked at the clock and there was one second. Yeah. And it was fortunate that the video review camera had the angle that had the wrestlers exactly between them and the clock. And that the clock was in perfect view and you could see the moment that the takedown occurred and see that there was actually one yeah. second left on the clock. So, That's so cool. I love it. it. That, I bet that was something to see. For it sure. was. It was exciting. I kept telling <laughs> D. I said, you got it. <laughs> it's, it you got it. Yeah. Yep. And so. you weren't the only one telling D that he had mm -hmm. it as Diorian. Uh, said that when you got off the bus, I think 
you were quoted as saying, I remember telling myself that I had it. I just had to go get the medal. Is that yep. accurate? Yep. Now, how did you, what led you to that mentality, and how did you keep that mentality throughout the season? Um, coach, he was telling me all <laughs> week that most guys not prepared mentally, you know, when they go into this tournament. And so I knew that I had to be prepared mentally, so I just came up with ideals to, you know, psych myself out to be ready to go in there and wrestle. And, I kept that mentality throughout the whole tournament. I kept telling Vicky, our 125 pounder, you know, that I'm like a train. I'm not stopping. That's why I told him every day. I told him like 10 times a day that I wasn't <laughs> going to stop. I told, him, I told him I was going to win it. And he looked at me in my eyes and said, and I could tell that he believed me and that I, I believed it. And that's what got me through. Yeah, yep. that's so cool. Did you tell him what I made you do through the weekend? Uh, Staying with the writing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Coach, um, through the week, he made us everyone write um, NJCAA um, 165, 2014 national champion. Yeah. He made us write it um, for three days, 100 times. And yeah. then the last day, 25 <laughs> times in cursive, which was pretty hard. <laughs> which was pretty hard for me because I had a hard time writing it. put a twist on it, <laughs> make him write it in cursive. Yeah. That's cool. That's reminiscent of what Pat Riley did when he won the 2006 mm. championship with the Heat. He, he wrote the date that they were going to win the championship. Well, where I got it was from uh, Kyle Dake, uh, <clears throat> who was a four-time NCAA champion. Uh, in his interview, after he won his fourth title, he said that he did this every day. And Zach had already been doing it. So I just took a page out of their playbook and said, hey, everybody needs to do this. Yeah. I want everybody to write it down and just keep saying it to yourself again and again. That's cool. So. Well, congratulations, Dionne. Yeah. Now, Zach, you uh, went... 9 and 0 in your victory. Well, you won 9 0 mm -hmm. in that last that 141 national championship belt. How did that feel? What was your mindset going into that particular match? Uh, going into that match, I was, I was pretty confident. I uh, before the tournament started, I was pretty nervous. I don't know why. I kind of had those butterflies, and uh, you know, this is probably the last time I'll wrestle again and in, in competition. Uh, but once I started wrestling on Friday. I'd, I just felt good. I felt like I was ready, and I just tried to keep that mindset. Uh, before wrestling the finals, coach came up to me and uh, patted me on the shoulder and said, "I got a really good feeling." And I said, "Yeah, so do I." So. <laughs> so uh, do I. Let's do it. And he took off and <laughs> ran up on the stage. <laughs> so do I. Let's do it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's awesome. it felt good. So cool. It's funny. He's really impatient when yeah. it comes to doing work. He wants to do it now. Let's let's go. He doesn't have much tolerance in practice and stuff for any fooling around. It's like, let's get to work. Let's go now. You get you tell him to do something and it's now. And and I saw that in his eyes uh, right before he went up on the stage. I said, I, I feel really good about tonight. And he said, so do I. Let's go. And he just took off. And I, <laughs> I'd hate That's to be cool. standing in his way at this point because he wants to get it done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, that kind of mentality will get you national championship. There's just, yeah, there's just, yeah. Uh, there's a look in their eye. There's a look of uncertainty for some people, and and in his eyes, it was an absolute certainty. I'm I'm not going to be denied, and I just mm -hmm. knew. I love it. That's so cool. And you talked about how being a runner-up in last year's national tournament helped you in this one. How much do you think it was a help, and how specifically do you feel like it helped you? Um, it, I think it helped. It helped a lot. Um, I remember the feeling I had after I lost, and I just kept telling myself I don't want that again. I'm the kind of person that I would rather. I hate to lose more than I like to win. I I don't like to lose. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I just kept telling myself I don't I don't want to feel that again. That was you know I'd rather take third than second to lose your last match of the year. It's just it's hard to lose like that, and uh, so I just kept telling myself I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, and I think that's the that's the biggest motivator I had. As soon as last year, as soon as I lost, I was like, let's get ready for next year. Let's yeah. Start getting ready. So <laughs> there it is, coach. So you're talking yeah. about. He didn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, throughout winning, okay, you were able to keep that sportsmanship mentality as you went on to not only win a national title but also sportsman of the year, and like to. Have you go a little bit into detail about winning that Sportsman of the Year and how those two accomplishments feel for you? It's it's pretty cool to win that. Uh, like I said, I I don't like to lose, so when you're winning, it's pretty easy to be a good sport. <laughs> but uh, I think that award should probably go to somebody that you know loses mm -hmm. and is a good sport about it. But 
No, it's 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 good that I won that. It's a pretty cool honor. So yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations, Zach, on the national championship. Now, the Orion. What do you feel are your thoughts for next year and what you'll do? Um, I haven't really decided yet. Um, I heard from coach that I have quite a few colleges talking to him, but I haven't decided yet. It's going to be a big step, I feel like. So we're just going to wait to decide, you know, like going into the summer. So. All right. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Zach, what are your thoughts for next year? Um, I think I'm going to be done wrestling. I'm getting married. I just got engaged. So I'm getting married in July. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to move on to that part of life and just go to school, be a student, and get married. All right, man. Well, congratulations times two then. <laughs> Coach, mm -hmm. you're uh, planning for next year, I'd imagine, already. Is that accurate or no? Uh, yeah, I've been sorting <laughs> through the emails. I mean, they're coming in. There, there's a combination of, uh, you know, uh, we have on our website uh, application form, and, and I get bombarded with those. And uh, a lot of them are, are uh, student athletes that aren't necessarily going to be really competitive for us at this level, but they're people that are interested in Northwest College and they can get a great education and be a part of our team. So, you know, I've got to find ways to to get those folks in here and 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 check them out. And then, uh, you know, out on the recruiting trail, I have several several prospects that we're looking at. Uh, I've got a lot of guys from my past that call me and say, you know, that are good good resources in terms of recruiting, as well as these young men. They tell me, hey, coach. You know, you ought to look at this guy. We know him. He'll fit in well with what we do. Uh, so it's a long spring and, and trying to sort through, you know, uh, literally hundreds of applicants and, and possibilities. But uh, the process has started. The other thing is uh, with the success that we had, uh, not only in the national tournament, but through the year, a lot of people have been watching these young men. And, and uh, I'm getting bombarded with phone calls uh, you know, from uh, Division One coaches, Division Two coaches, uh, NAI coaches that are wanting these guys to go on to the next level. But our focus at this point is, uh, you know, they all met with their advisor this week on Monday, uh, except for Dior, and he went in on Tuesday. <laughs> but they met with their advisors, just getting caught up on where they're at, what they need to do in terms of graduation and everything. So trying to get these guys in a good position where they are graduating, where they are in a position to transfer. Uh, so the academics take the forefront for these guys as we go yeah. into the spring. As they have for you all year, you mm -hmm. stress academics. Mm -hmm. and coach, we hammer them. <laughs> you talked about the success that you had this season. Would you care to talk to us about the progression that the team had from the start of the season to, I guess, mm -hmm. ultimately the national championship? Yeah, I think we were really fortunate okay. starting this year. We had uh, tremendous leadership. Uh, going in the year, we've got these two guys, uh, Miles Nixon and uh, uh, Brendan Turner and Ben Jorgensen. Uh, these guys are great leaders. They're sophomores. They know what's going on. Cody Vicky, Jeff McCormick was a huge, uh, huge leader for our team and, and turned out to be more so than I even realized because he's such a quiet young man. But, uh, you know, emotionally and spiritually, he, he became kind of the heart and the soul of the team. Uh, when it comes to getting to work, Zach's the one that always takes charge and gets these guys going, and he sets the tempo and the pace. But I think uh, Jeff seemed to to manage the emotional part of the team and kept, kept us really steady. Mm -hmm. uh, so those things, you know, really give me an advantage going into the year. Um, rank number one, there's a little pressure on us in the beginning, but I think our guys wrestled well, and it was my job to try to keep things in perspective that you know, that doesn't mean anything in November. It only means something in February and March when you're number one. So uh, we continue to do our daily routine and working. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of repetitions and a lot of things that we have to do that's just day-to-day -day work that's not fun. And keeping their mentality through that process, uh, getting through the holidays. And uh, there are points in the year where we accelerate, and I worked them hard from uh, December 28th when we come back that whole month of January. And as a result of that, um, you know, we were not at our best at the Apodaca duels, and that was a disappointment for the home fans. I think there were some folks that maybe gave up on us a little bit, thought, well, they're not as good as we thought, and so forth. But we knew that we were tired and that we had done the work, but it prepared us for February. Mm -hmm. uh, we recovered from that, we rallied, we got our mojo back. Uh, we felt really good going in the regional tournament. We got our health back. We got guys back in the lineup. Cody Vicky, who had a broken hand. Uh, Jeff McCormick, who just has a miraculous story. Yes. Uh, you know, Miles Nixon, who suffered from elbow injury. Zach, who had been nursing, you know, some back troubles. And, and uh, Diorian with a shoulder. And we were able to get all those guys kind of healed up and, and into the regional tournament with a good mentality, good health, 
and a great attitude and they just lit it up and were able to hang on to it for two more weeks. And uh, I felt like we were as exciting as we had been all year when we got to the national tournament. And that's not always the case. A lot of times guys are looking past the tournament to spring break and they're tired and not with our guys. They were at their best at that point yeah. and it was really satisfying. Cool. You talked about the Jeff McCormick story, and I got goosebumps a little bit there. That's <laughs> certainly, yeah. that that's so cool. And he actually helped quite a little bit at the t national tournament, didn't he? If I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, he and helped by a lot. Little, I mean a lot. <laughs> he helped a lot. He, yeah, he yeah. he placed third. He scored uh, 19 and a half points. Yeah. Uh, out of our 149. So yeah, he yeah. scored a lot of points, and uh, you know, only ones that scored more than him were these two right here. Yeah. You know, and Zach had three pins, so. I think uh, Zach ended up scoring uh, 20, 28. 20, 28 points, which was one of the highs in the tournament. I don't know that anybody scored more than 28 that for any team. It that was? was the most points. Yeah, the most points any individual scored for their team in the entire tournament, yeah. and that come from the bonus points, the pins, and the major decisions. Um, in what I think was the toughest weight class in the tournament, uh, he has three pins and two major decisions, only gave up one offensive point uh, the entire tournament. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's neat. Yeah. So what do you consider the high point of the season? Uh, no question, uh, Saturday of the national tournament. The last day of competition of our season was the high point. And that's uh, a coach's dream, an athlete's dream, that the best thing in the season is the last thing you do. Yeah. So there's no question. We had a lot of, lot of great things that happened this year, but there's no question that was the high point. Uh, prior to that was uh, our regional performance, and uh, you know, so uh, we just had those last two performances were as good as they get, and that's a coach's dream. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, congratulations again, all of you on the on you two on the two individual national championships, and uh, also getting second place at the tournament. That is amazing. Congrats, it's the best coach. second place I ever got. <laughs> uh, you know, usually I, I laugh because when I was a kid, my uh, my grandmother used to have to look for my second place medals under the bleachers. I did not get the sportsmanship award at that age. And <laughs> I don't think he did either at that age. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a second that I'm extremely proud of. All right, good. Looking forward to next year, coach. Thank you. So with that, we will we'll see you again next week. Till then, Trapper Nation.